While console gamers see the rivalry of the Xbox One and the PS4, and the debate of PC and consoles is also rampant, there's also another rivalry within the PC community, and as most of you know since you're watching this video, that rivalry is AMD versus Nvidia. AMD and Nvidia are two very large companies that both push out gaming graphics cards about every year or so. If you ask anyone that's involved in PC gaming, they're sure to have a very strong opinion on either AMD or Nvidia. For years and years, the debate has been lively about which company is better, AMD or Nvidia, and I'm here to answer that question. Hey guys, this is Nick, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the AMD versus Nvidia debate and which company is ultimately better. So we're going to be splitting this video up into three section th sections, and those sections will be performance, value, and customer friendliness. I'm also going to be focusing mainly on graphics cards because although AMD also makes a processor line titled Ryzen, that's for a later time. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. So first off, for performance and power, looking at NVIDIA's GPU lineup, NVIDIA has graphics cards ranging from the GT 1030, a $70 entry-level gaming card, all the way up to a Titan XP, a $1000 horsepower graphics card. Furthermore, looking at AMD's GPU lineup, AMD has graphics cards such as the RX 560, the RX 570, and the RX 580, and AMD's upcoming RX Vega line coming in September and those are AMD's higher-end GPUs. For the past year or so, AMD has sort of been out of the loop when it comes to higher-end gaming performance. Now, AMD did release a card called the Vega Frontier Edition, a $1,000 GPU, but AMD themselves said that that card is meant for handling big data sets and a diverse range of computational workloads. So this card really isn't meant for gaming, and that can be easily seen with its extreme amount of power consumption and somewhat lacking performance in games. So, even though as of right now, Nvidia is leading the pack with their higher-end GPUs such as the GTX 1070, 1080, and 1080Ti, that doesn't mean that AMD won't be able to make a comeback with the RX Vega lineup. And if you guys really want me to, I can come back to this topic once RX Vega is out and do an apples-to-apples -apples comparison between the RX Vega line and the Nvidia 10 line. Continuing on to talk about value, although Nvidia may have more horsepower than AMD at the moment, that doesn't necessarily hold true for the value they bring to their cards, or the price to performance ratio. AMD makes, in my opinion, the best valued graphics card on the market as of right now called the RX 570. Look at P looking at PC Gamer's best bang for the buck chart, a chart that ranks video cards by their FPS to dollar performance ratio, the RX 570 actually sits close to the top, with the only other card beating it out being the GTX 1060 3GB model. But even between the RX 570 and the GTX 1060 3GB model, I'd say go with the RX 570, because the 1063GB is about $30 more, and honestly the performance increase is very minimal. Now, both AMD and Nvidia make great value graphics cards, and to only talk about one great value card would be really unfair, but honestly, if I was on a tight budget of maybe $400 to $600 when building a gaming PC, I would go AMD, just because they offer great value cards for very cheap, such as the RX 470. However, if you're not on a budget and you're looking at higher end cards, I'd say you should go the Nvidia route. Nvidia has great offerings for the past year with the 1070, 1080, and 1080Ti, and although AMD's RX Vega cards are coming out in a month or so, they're just catching up with Nvidia over a year later, and the power draw on the RX Vega cards are a lot higher than Nvidia's power draw. Of course, we're going to have to wait and see to see how well AMD's higher cards actually perform when compared to Nvidia's cards, but honestly, with the specifications they released, I'm just not that impressed. Now, of course, there also is talk about AMD's Ryzen, AMD's new processor line, which arguably offers better value compared to Intel, but again, that talk is for a different video. So last but not least, we have customer friendliness, and this is sort of a long one. In May of 2015, AMD woke up to the unpleasant surprise that Witcher 3, one of 2015's biggest games, would exclusively use Nvidia Hairworks, and completely disregard AMD's competing software, TrustFX. A lot of people said this completely sabotaged AMD's performance in the game, which to some extent is true. 
And this isn't the only case of games running better on a certain company's hardware. Other examples include Doom, Watch Dogs 2, and Hitman, and all of these games are games that run better on either Nvidia's technology or AMD's. And although nobody is willing to admit it, there almost definitely is some bias in the developer's hands. Things like these are great for companies, but terrible for the consumer. Exclusive deals really are a lose-lose situation for almost everyone, and although I hate to say it, you're going to have to look at exclusive deals like these and let these factor into which video card you want to buy. To continue on, another example of aggressiveness on Nvidia's side is G-Sync. G-Sync is technology for monitors that uses Nvidia's hardware, and basically what it does is the monitor outputs frame rate from your graphics card instead of your monitor, which ultimately delivers a smoother gaming experience. Now, NVIDIA isn't the only one that uses this technology. AMD actually has something extremely similar to this called FreeSync, doing pretty much the same thing that G-Sync does. The only difference between the two is that while you can normally find FreeSync monitors on the market starting as low as $100, NVIDIA G-Sync monitors cost a lot more than that, with the cheapest one I was able to find being around $350 to $400. Now, I really do like Nvidia, but honestly, they aren't a customer-friendly company at all. So I'm going to have to give this the win to AMD for customer friendliness just because they're a lot more open as a company. So having re reviewed performance, value, and customer friendliness, which company is better? Honestly, for me, the answer is neither. Sure, each company has different advantages over the other, but at the end of the day, a company is just that. A company and you shouldn't pledge your allegiance to one. They just want your money at the end of the day. I go for the best performance I can get for a good price, and for this past generation of graphics cards, I went with Nvidia. But that doesn't mean that Nvidia is the best choice. Since I mentioned before, each company has advantages over the other, and at the end of the day, everyone has an opinion. So that's about it for today's video. Please go ahead and tell me which company you prefer in the comments and tell me why that is. If you liked this video, go ahead and leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, go ahead and subscribe and turn on post notifications. That's all for me, but like always, I'll see you guys all next time. Bye guys.